Today we're going to be looking at this battery monitor. This is model number KL140F. Some of the features that it shows on the box. It can do firmware updates, real-time capacity monitoring, Bluetooth control, mobile phone, bi-directional detection, which means it can monitor charging and discharging, has display endurance time, low power consumption, comprehensive measuring. So we'll open it up and we'll see what's inside. This is the manual it comes with. It has all your wiring diagrams and everything you need to hook this up in whatever orientation you want. We've got our shunt. This is a 400 amp shunt. This comes in 100 and 400 and I believe 600 amp shunts. All you do is you connect your battery negative and then plug in and plug into the device and it'll monitor your consumption. We have the device itself. On the device here, it shows all the different connections and what they do. We've got a wrench, a little flathead screwdriver, uh, some 400 amp battery lugs. Looks to be copper. These things are massive. I'm not going to be using these. I'm not going to get nowhere near 400 amps. So it'll be nice to have for something else. And what looks to be a battery positive cable. Now there's two of these that came in the box. I'm not too sure what these are for. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say that you use them kind of as a spacer and then these will give you mounting holes to mount your shunt. And there's also mounting holes on the battery monitor unit itself. And we have the communication cable between the shunt and the device. We also have, ooh, this is nice and long. We also have a rather long temperature sensor. Uh, this device is stated to having low temperature disconnect, which will be run through a relay that you hook up. Uh, and if you run your power through the relay, then you can interrupt the power flow by using a relay and this will click on and off the relay. It'll control it. Okay, now I have it hooked up to the app. Uh, all I had to do was download the app and uh, I've got a screen recording here so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go to search. Here's my device. Click on it. And there we go. So I'm going to change my uh, battery amp hour setting. I have uh, 230 amp hours for my 24 volt pack. Uh, another cool thing that you can do on here is you can click on the voltage and you can have the input voltage range because right now you can see it's 0 to 120. So I'm going to bring that down to uh, we'll go 30 and then I'm going to bring this up to say 15. And then you can see now how it's made it a lot tighter so you can get a better visual of your voltage, your amperage. I'm only ever going to go I'm never going to go higher than 200 amps, so I'm going to change that. So that's going to give me a much tighter reading. Um, actually, let's go with uh, let's go with 150, uh, 175. So there you can see now. I have my zero, and on one side it's showing me the charge, and on the other side it's showing me the discharge uh, current. So if I click on power, nothing, electricity consumption, nothing. So I can zero out. I'm not connected to anything. Clear data. My temperature. So you can calibrate the temperature. 18 degrees is about what it is in here right now. So that's good. Uh, Runtime. And then nothing for these guys. So you can see your battery resistance, battery left in minutes so it's saying 45 minutes at the current load and uh, time elapsed in amp hours so you could use this to test your batteries as well so if we go over here it's going to show a curve chart and then here's your settings so you have over voltage protection low voltage protection over current protection over temperature protection uh, over power protection and ncp I'll have to look that up in a minute. For your relay, that's where you're going to be able to control your protections. 
is you're gonna have to run your power through a relay. I was told, I contacted the company, they said this did have low temperature protection, but I'm not seeing it here in the app. Even if we click on here, it still says external over temperature. So I don't see low temperature protection on here. I'm gonna have to contact the company and see, cause I was hoping this would have low temperature protection, but a pretty nifty little app regardless. So let's uh, turn on a load and we'll see how it looks in the app. So I'm just turning on the grow watt inverter. And I can see right now 10.52 watts. Once the inverter actually clicks on, that's probably gonna jump up closer to 50 watts, which is the standby consumption for this inverter. And there we go. And then the inverter just kicked on and we're just under 60 watts. That's pretty awesome. Uh, and you can see too also with the battery icon, it has a load symbol, which is really neat. I wonder if that changes to charge if I start to put a charge onto it. But uh, I'm gonna get a load. Okay, so now for my test, I'm gonna use a heat gun to apply some current going through the system. So you can see there, we got uh, 41 amps. I'm gonna switch over to my BMS. BMS is showing 39.7 amps. So 41. BMS has got 42. We'll let this even out. Okay, so 40 amps, 41. So it seems to be pretty accurate. My BMS app kind of fluctuates a little bit. It doesn't give a steady reading so i'm going to trust the shunt over the bms so that's pretty cool um now i want to see if i put a charger on if that little icon the load icon is going to change over to charging now in a couple seconds it should switch over and then we should start to see a charging current see what happens just heard the click chargers oh there we go oh did you look at that that's pretty neat So we can see the charger is ramping up. And it shows that there's current coming in. So if you had this hooked up to solar or to an AC outlet, it would switch over and show that there's a current getting charged. We're at about uh, 10 amps. Let's see what the BMS says. BMS showing 10 amps. I only have my charger up to 10 amps. So let's bring that up a little bit. Okay, I've bumped it up to 60 amps of charging. Okay, chargers re-engage now. That is really cool, I like that. I like this app a lot. And it's ramping up. We got 10 amps. Oh, that is getting up there. We got 50 amps. Once it starts to level off, then I'll switch over to the other app, see how it looks. Okay, it looks like 57.6, oh, 58. Right around 58, let's check the BMS, 58.7. And we're right, well, it's about the same. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So after you use the app a few times and, it, and you discharge and charge, the percentage on the battery icon there should, uh, should fix itself. Yeah, right on, there you go. That's, uh, that's a really cool, for a really cheap battery shunt monitoring system, that's pretty neat. Okay, I'm gonna disconnect the power now. Wow, instant. That is pretty neat. So now it's gone back to the load side. Okay, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna run through my house and uh, see how far I can get away for distance to see how how much of a range this has for the for the Bluetooth. Okay, so for the range test, that was pretty uh, awesome. So my shop right now is in attached to the basement so I went up to my second floor and I walked over probably about 20 to 25 feet away and I was still connected it wasn't until I curved around a wall on the far side of the house that uh, that it disconnected so it's got a really good range for the Bluetooth as well so that's good um, what else can I show so the temperature sensor let's heat this up and see if that changes Oh, 20 degrees 21 
Okay, so the temperature sensor works, that's good. You can monitor the temperature of your batteries through this app as well. I'd like to mention too, you can buy a screen to go with this. So the screen, I think the last time I checked was about $25. So the battery shunt and the monitor was about $40. So if you were to buy both of them, you're looking at about $60. But you could just get away with buying this and using your cell phone for your screen. Yeah, there's not much more I can say about it. Uh, this is definitely a pass in my books. I'm going to use this and I'm going to hook this up when I build out my grow watt build. I'm going to do some videos on how I connect all my batteries and then how I connect the AC and how I'm connecting the solar and then my solar panel set up and grounding. So those are going to be some interesting videos coming up. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, subscribe, like, and shoot me some comments if you have any questions. All right, thanks. Bye.